In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Sisters and brothers, let us offer worship, praise, and thanksgiving through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. You bring light to those in darkness. Christe eleison. You pour your love out on the world. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. God our Father, you have promised to remain forever with those who do what is just and right. Help us to live in your presence. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, If someone has on his skin a scab or pustule or blotch which appears to be the sore of leprosy, he shall be brought to Aaron the priest or to one of the priests among his descendants. If the man is leprous and unclean, the priest shall declare him unclean by reason of the sore on his head. The one who bears the sore of leprosy shall keep his garments rent and his head bare and shall muffle his beard. He shall cry out, unclean, unclean. As long as the sore is on him, he shall declare himself unclean, since he is, in fact, unclean. He shall dwell apart, making his abode outside the camp. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I turn to you, O Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. I turn to you, O Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is remitted, Blessed the man to whom the Lord imputes no guilt, in whose spirit is no guile. I turn to you, O Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. To you I have acknowledged my sin, my guilt I did not hide. I said, I will confess my transgression to the Lord, and you have forgiven the guilt of my sin. I turn to you, O Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. 
Rejoice in the Lord, exalt you just. Ring out your joy, all you upright of heart. I turn to you, O Lord, in time of trouble. And you fill me with the joy of salvation. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Avoid giving offense, whether to the Jews or Greeks or the Church of God, just as I try to please everyone in every way, not seeking my own benefit, but that of the many, that they may be saved. Be imitators of me, as I am of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. A leper came to Jesus and kneeling down, begged him and said, If you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, Jesus stretched out his hand touched him and said to him, I do will it, be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately and he was made clean. Then warning the man sternly, he dismissed him at once. Jesus said to him, see that you tell no one anything, but go show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. Jesus remained outside in deserted places, and people kept coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This man in the gospel feverishly makes his way through the crowds who are gathered around Jesus. Jesus had just left Capernaum. Remember the passage from last Sunday? After having healed Simon Peter's mother-in-law, the whole town had gathered outside the door, bringing the sick to be cured by Jesus. He then left and went to a deserted place to pray but everyone was looking for Jesus. Jesus was concerned that the people's focus on his remarkable cures would obscure his deeper call to wholeness and redemption. But Jesus cannot help but notice the leper. This man from ancient times is marked out. The laws of Leviticus, as described in our first reading, have made him an object to be shunned. But with his garments rent, his head bare, and his beard muffled, he announces himself, unclean, unclean, and falls 
begging before Jesus. The crowd repulses, pushing back from the spot where the leper kneels. Many retreat to the fringes of the circle. A few leave, disgusted by the scene. Still, the leprous man persists. Jesus, if you wish, you can make me clean. It was a powerful act of faith in Jesus' power and trust in him. Jesus responds with deep emotion. It says of him, moved with pity, also translated as moved with compassion. The verb in Greek literally means to have a gut reaction, that is to be moved in one's innards. Ancient people considered the intestines as the seat of emotion. Mark's use of this strong verb emphasized the depth of Jesus' feeling for the person with leprosy. Instead of backing away from this man, Jesus reaches out his hand to him, touches him, and says how much he wants to be with the man and to see him be made clean and have a way back into the heart of the community. Jesus responds, I do will it. Can we hear Jesus saying, of course I want to heal you. Be made clean. The man is cured. Jesus then commands him to show himself to the priests and make ritual offerings to be restored to the community. We don't know if the cured man does this, but we do know that he didn't obey Jesus' command to say nothing to anyone. It says the man spread the whole story widely. It would seem the sheer joy of being healed overwhelmed the man. He couldn't keep his happiness a secret. Something like being healed of COVID-19 after a long and arduous hospital stay, being wheeled out through the lobby, doctors and nurses applauding and family members in tears to be reunited with their loved one at long last. At the end of the gospel story, Jesus' oneness with the person who had been ostracized because of his leprous condition is emphasized when Jesus himself experiences the status of being an outsider. It says Jesus remained outside in deserted places. Perhaps Jesus did so, not only because of the crowds who kept coming to him, but also because Jesus deliberately wanted to be in solidarity with those who were isolated. Jesus was offering them the compassion of God who desires to be one with the sick and suffering. This gospel offers encouragement to those who suffer illness or disability so that they may reach out in prayer to Jesus and to the believing community to ask not only for compassion, but to be remembered as the valued members of the community that they are, known and loved for their gift of faith, helped by our prayers. The theologian and poet John Shea offers another reflection of the cured man telling everyone about his being healed and why Jesus could no longer go into town openly. Is it because that Jesus himself is then considered unclean? Having touched the leper, Jesus falls under the Leviticus sentence of being excluded the cleansed leper can now enter the town, but the one who cleansed him must keep his distance. But no matter where Jesus is, people find him. There's something mystical in Jesus taking on the status of the leper. Shea writes of this in his poem, A Prayer to the Pain of Jesus. 
When crutches were thrown away, did Jesus limp after the running cripples? Did his eyes dim when Bartimaeus saw? Did life ebb in him when it flowed in Lazarus? When lepers leapt in new flesh, did scales appear on the back of his hand? The Gospels say Jesus felt power go out from him, but neglect to say whether at that moment pain came in. Did the Son of God take on ungrown legs and dead eyes in the terrifying knowledge that pain does not go away, only moves on. Jesus' compassion may have included experiencing within himself the total situation of the leper, sharing in it intimately. As Jesus hung dying on the cross, pouring out his life for us, he shared intimately our human suffering and poured his compassion on us. My mother used to tell me how in her 50 years of work as a registered nurse that she always would look to see the Christ in each patient she ministered to. When we see images of nurses caring ever so compassionately for someone suffering from the virus, hanging on to life, a nurse covered with protective gear, yet being among the very few able to touch the person, consoling and speaking tender words on behalf of loved ones who must remain outside. That nurse, that patient, it is Christ meeting Christ. May we be Christ for one another and for those most in need of his healing love. Amen. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis and the church he shepherds, that we may be instruments of healing and comfort, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our high school junior class on retreat this Sunday, that they may be blessed with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are without food or shelter, for the victims of winter cold and storms, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who die from war and terrorism, for the world's refugees, for the protection of all God's children, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and infirm, that Jesus the healer may take their hands and raise them up to health and wholeness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who minister in the healthcare profession, for the students at the medical college, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the thousands who have died from the coronavirus and for all the faithful departed, in a special way for Patrick Lyons, 
that they may dwell forever in eternal peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Merciful God, all the peoples of the earth are longing for the healing touch of your Son. Hear our prayers and fill us with his compassion. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Gathering our prayers and petitions into one, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining in prayer this day. We are producing an episode, or the Stations of the Cross, which will be available for viewing this coming Wednesday, the beginning of Lent. After the blessing, Crawford and I invite you to join in singing, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. The hymn text is found in the video description. Thank you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you always.